how's it going everyone? This is Craig here from Sound Iron, and in today's walkthrough, I'm very excited to introduce to you Axe Machina, a powerful and cutting edge virtual seven string electric guitar library that's designed for unleashing pure metal destruction. So for those of you that don't know, I've been playing guitar for over 20 years now, and predominantly playing in the death metal genre in bands like Archaic and Deeds of Flesh. So growing up, I've always been really fascinated with different styles and techniques when it came to guitar, and I used to always watch all those old instructional videos and really just analyzing different mechanics to try to see what my favorite players were doing, you know, with like different pick attacks and different techniques and just how they got the sound that they achieved. And, you know, being inspired by those people, I just really tried to, you know, do the hunt and find all the different sounds and things that I like so I can incorporate it in my own playing. Sampling my guitar for this library was definitely an awesome experience. It really made me look into my playing even further to really try to craft the best sound and attack that I can put into a guitar library and take all these sounds that I've heard in my head growing up and put them in a box and give them to you. So the guitar that I sampled for Axe Machina is my custom Kiesel Aries 7 string. Everything about this guitar was handpicked. The different specs were meticulously chosen. Everything from the Buckeye Burl on top, this guitar is Swamp Ash. And the reason I picked Swamp Ash is because it has a really snappy sound to it. And then having the bird's eye maple fretboard really helps even add a little bit more brightness to the guitar. So it really cuts through and has a nice snap and pop to it. So from all the guitar specs and even the pick that I chose were very carefully picked out, uh, no pun intended, but this is a Dava Master Control Nickel Pick. And this thing has more attack and cut than any other pick I've ever used over the years. So I really wanted to use that when sampling this guitar because with the brightness and, a, and just the overall like snappy, snarly tone of this guitar with this pick just really has an unrelenting sound. You can go from just playing like really soft and more like heavier rock styles or even just like brutal punishing death metal you really have the options to create all those different types of sounds with this library. When you load up the library, you'll see that you have eight different NKIs from DI signals to reamp tones and a couple different light presets and simple presets. So let's go ahead and start checking out some of the different features of the library. So the difference between the DI and the reamped NKIs and the light versions of those is the light versions have less round robin. So if you have a computer that is not as powerful and you still want to create on the go, you can do that using the light versions as they load up much quicker. So right now I have the DI loaded up and you can hear some of the sounds. And this is just the pure DI signal with some different amp chains in here. So if we head over to the effects rack, you'll see that you have some different effects loaded. We have this Van 51 amp loaded up. We also have a cabinet loaded up. So if you're gonna have an amp sim, you're gonna need a cabinet. So we have this loaded up here. And if you have your own cabinet impulses, you can go ahead and bypass this and use your own to really shape the sound the way you want. So if we go ahead and turn these off, you'll hear that we have the pure DI signal. So that way you can reamp using your own amp sims or your own effects so you can really shape the sound the way that you want. So aside from including the DI signal which allows you to create your own tone using your favorite amp sims or plugins, we also included a reamp tone of a really modern high gain type tone using some of my favorite software and let's go ahead and play for you a little bit of this. So before we dive in and start exploring some of the different features of the library, I want to go ahead and show you some of the different articulations that we recorded. So here we have just some regular single note sustains. And then we have some single note palm mutes. And then we have some power chords. And then we have some palm muted power chords. And then we have some pinch harmonics. And then we created a pinch harmonics chromatic articulation, which takes all these different pinch harmonics and lets you play them across the keyboard. And 
And with the chromatic version of these pinch harmonics, you can really get some wild sounds, especially if you just want to have a specific pinch harmonic and a certain range and pitch. So let's just go ahead and start from the top and work our way down. So right here, you'll see that you have body, attack, offset, you have release, release volume, and vibrato. And this center knob right here, this works in a couple different ways. So right now it's set to volume. I have this also mapped to my mod wheel. So this really allows you to play a little bit more dynamically. So when it's set like this, it's very dynamic to how you press on the keyboard. So using this volume really helps you shape the sound even more. Or you can do volume swells. Or you can change it to where it's set to dynamic. So when you click this right here, you'll see that it changes. And now this mod wheel works as a dynamic shaper. So if you're... So you can play really soft on the keyboard and just ride the mod wheel to get the different dynamics that you want. And this is a really cool feature because you can utilize the different slot systems and the velocity ranges to where you can change different articulations by how hard you play. And then you can basically just ride the dynamics using this dynamic wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to volume for now. And right over here on this release volume, you see that there's a drop down and it has normal, auto, and off. And this is really cool, especially if you wanna have more control over your releases. So if you have this set to auto and you play a little bit faster, you can hear that you're not getting those releases during those fast passages and it only plays when you're playing slower. You go ahead and change this to power chords. But if you're going, or you can just go ahead and set this to off and this is great, especially if you don't want any of those releases and you just want to turn it off, forget about it. Let's say you're programming a lot of intricate stuff and you don't want to hear any of those, just go ahead and turn it off. And then we also have a vibrato knob, which introduces a pseudo vibrato. And this is great if you want to just have a little bit of vibrato into your notes. And then you can also learn that to any of your different MIDI controllers as well. So if we want to learn that to this knob right here, you can do that really easily. So for those of you that are owners of any of our Hyperion products, this slot system should look very familiar to you. And what's great about this is that you have a lot of customization and flexibility with how you lay out your different articulations. So if you click anywhere in these slots, you can just add any of these articulations. You can add the same articulation across every slot if you want and just have different little tweaks to it. So you have a lot of flexibility in the way that you can set this up. So the next feature I wanna talk about is the pick direction. And here you'll see that you have alternate, down and up. So you have different choices as far as really having control over the way the pick attack is. If you just want to set it and forget it and just let it alternate between down and up, you can just set it to alt. But one of the things I like to do is going back into the slot systems, go to each one and just set this all to the same articulation. And what you can do is you can have on the first slot set to alt. On the next slot, you can have it set to down. And then on this other slot, you can have it set to up. So you have a lot more control as far as really being able to choose what's alternate picked. So if you have a whole uh, riff that's really just alternate picked, you can just set it to that. But if you have certain parts of the riff that are down picked, you're gonna wanna have it set and change to a down pick articulation because it really has a specific sound. Up picks and down picks have a very specific sound. So being able to have control over that is really cool. So now I'm gonna go ahead and play you an example of this using the music that you heard in the trailer for the library. And this is using some different key switching and I actually made an expression map in Cubase so it makes it really easy to change articulation. So let's go ahead and take a listen and show you how this works in action. So with the normal play mode, it allows you to use the sustain pedal in the usual way. So if you want to go ahead and play and ring out notes.
Next, I want to talk about the repeat play mode. And what this allows you to do is use the sustain pedal as a repeater. So if you hold the sustain pedal down and you play and release a note, it's going to trigger another note on the release. <laughs> And this is great, especially if you're just trying to get out some ideas without having to program some stuff in and being able to play it on the keyboard a little bit easier. You could just hold down the sustain pedal. Or if you're playing some more chuggy type stuff. And you can hear it cycling between down and up picks as well. So you still get that realistic down and up strumming type of sound. So now I want to go ahead and show you the strum mode. And this is really cool because when you play down a chord, you're not going to hear anything, but you're going to see some key switches pop up towards the end of the keyboard. And what this means is that now, So you can control the different strums. So you have one that cycles between down and up. So if you're holding your sustain pedal. You can just do the down up strumming just on one key or if you want more control. So if you're doing like a down, down, up, up, down type pattern, you can do that as well. Or you can play the individual notes. And when talking about strum mode, you'll see that you have some other controls for it below here. So you have time as well as random. So you can make it sound a little bit more realistic. So depending on how you set these, you'll get a little bit more separation in the notes. So if you bring this down a little bit. So it really gives you that strummed sound, which I think is really cool, especially if you're doing more kind of quieter and cleaner type sounds and you really want to have that more strum type sound. So with the legato, it's utilizing a pseudo legato, but you're still getting that attack for the next note. So if you want to have that. So if you're playing and holding a note, just like you normally would with any legato articulation, you're going to be able to have that smooth sound as it transitions but you're gonna hear a little bit of attack. So when you go over here and you set it to hammer, it's gonna soften that attack and act as more of a hammer on. So the next feature I wanna talk about is really awesome and it's called dual mode. And what this does is as you turn this on, you'll see this image of two guitars load up and this allows you to play two guitars simultaneously with one pan left and one pan right. And you can click on this image and you could mess with the panning. You'll see it coordinates over here to this little guitar one, guitar two. And with the link icon, you can basically pan one guitar and it'll pan the other one opposite of each other. So it makes it really easy without having to pan one and then go in and pan another one. And then you can also turn this link off if you want to have a little bit more control over the way that each guitar is panned. I usually like to leave the link on because it just makes it easy when you're just panning one left or right. So if you want to hear how guitar two sounds in the left side, you can just go ahead and swap them and it's really easy. So I really like this and it makes it really fun to play. <laughs> Go ahead and play some power chords. So with the guitar having unison notes and sometimes you might want to have a specific fret or note played as you're playing a riff or programming stuff in, you might want to force that specific string. So going over here to the string setup, you'll see that you have each string laid out here, all seven strings. And what's cool about this is that it allows you to force a specific string. So if you select this here, you'll see that these orange keys 
all of these are the notes of that low string. So if we go over here to the sixth, we have all of these just right here. And it sounds very different when you turn it off and you're just playing that same thing like this. So you can hear it's playing some of those same notes, but on a different string, which has a different timbre and tone. So being able to force the string allows you to really create the riff that you want, because sometimes you might just be writing on one string, just playing open notes and then going between different notes on the fretboard. So it allows you to have a little bit more control over the tone and timbre of your sound. So for the key switches that force the different string locks, you can also have these key switches latching or temporary. So you have control over that as well. So the next section I want to talk about is this little center area right here. And all of these coordinate to when you click a specific slot. So if you select this slot right here, you'll see that it's going to display the articulation as well as the key switch that it's on. You can also change the panning here. So if you want to do like what I mentioned earlier by having certain slots with their narrowed velocity range and being able to change the different slots by velocity, you would do that here. And then you can also change the key switch and whether the key switch is latching or momentary. So the next part of the UI that I want to talk about is the sequencer page over here. And this acts as like a really advanced arpeggiator. And this works directly in correlation to the previous main tab. And what's cool about this is that you can use this as sort of like a riff generator. You can use it to get ideas or just quickly sequence in riffing ideas. You can just create your own. You can save them to use for later on. We've also included some for you to use as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you a little bit of this. So to utilize the sequencer, just make sure this activate sequencer is engaged. You'll see that it's lit up when it is. And then the next thing I want to talk about are these different lock icons right here. And this one connects to the different note values. This one connects to the different pick direction. And these connect to the different slots. So whatever articulations you have loaded in the slots on the previous page will be connected to this. So there's a few different tips I want to mention. So if you click this area right here by alt clicking, you can alt click and drag all of these up. So if you want to have them all just maxed out. Or if you drag one down a little bit and then you alt click, it'll set all of them the same. So if you have this one here and you're just like, ah, I just want to set them all the same, just alt click right here and it makes them all the same. Or you can alt click drag and do them all at the same time. So another thing you can do is you can alt click in the pick direction area and you can make them all the same. So if you want them all to be up picks or down picks, you can do that. Or if you control click this right here, it'll set it to alternate. So down, up, down, up, which makes it really easy and really quick to start programming and some stuff with the sequencer. Some other aspects of the sequencer is you have the sequencer direction right here. So you can control how it works as far as down, up, zigzag, move in and out, chord, random. And then you can go ahead and use some of these different dice icons over here. And what these do is they just randomize the different aspects. So if you want to randomize a bunch of different things about or the different note values or the different pick directions, you can do that too. So you can get really crazy with how this thing works. So here's another sequencer preset that I made, and this is just using it in kind of like a more punk strumming type thing. <laughs> And this is great, especially if you're just wanting to quickly get out ideas or if you're not much of a keyboard player and you just want to let the sequencer do the work, this is the place to go. So I want to go back to the effects rack, which we touched on a little bit earlier. In here, you have two different racks to choose from. You can load up any effects in any order that you want. We got some really cool ones in here, some really nice reverbs and delays and some different amps that you can use to develop some different tones. We also have some different presets that we've provided you as well. I'm going to go ahead and load one up now. This one's called Epic Cleans. This one's called Gazing at the Stars.
This next preset is called Epic Guitar Solo. So this next one's called Get the Funk Out, and this one's really cool because it's got a Cry Baby Wah effect loaded up, and you can learn this to your mod wheel so you can create some kind of funky sort of... So aside from all the other articulations that you would need for creating rock or metal or even death metal type tones, we also included some different effects articulations as well. So at the very far right of the keyboard, you'll see that there's some other key switches that are always there and you can use these to pepper in with your different sequencing to create some realistic sounds. So we have some different mutes, some hand swipes, So you have some different scrapes, percussive mutes, some different rakes, and some different slides and pick scrapes. So you can use these to create some really cool and realistic performances within your tracks. All right, so that about wraps up this walkthrough for Axe Machina. If you'd like to learn more about this library or check out some demos to hear it in action, make sure to go to soundiron.com. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on future videos like these, and we'll catch you in the next one. Take care.